A brilliant 100 from Quinton de Kock meant Sussex fell 66 runs short at the first central county ground after rain reduced the game to 32 overs and meant a delayed start of 5.30. Having lost the toss and been put in, the South Africans opened up with de Kock and former Sussex man Wayne Parnell. The pair took a couple of overs to get their feet, but in the third over the crowd were treated to the first maximum of the game, de Kock doing what he does best to Abindi Segende. Parnell, who batted down the order when he was with Sussex, was showing an attacking side to his game and he wasn't shy when taking on Danny Briggs and George Carton, hitting both bowlers for the full complement. The pair had taken the score past the 100 mark in the 13th over, but in the 15th Sussex got the wicket they were craving. Stane Van Sell doing for his fellow countrymen and having Parnell trapped in front for a quick fire 61 of 42 balls, including 7 falls and 3 maximums. Even with A.B. de Villiers pulling out feeling ill and Faf Duplessis resting an injury, the arrival of J.P. Dumini to the crease showed the sort of class the Sussex attack was facing. With nearly 300 appearances across all formats for his country, Dumini took his time to get used to conditions as de Kock decided to put his foot down. He took back-to-back -to -back sixes off Fan Sale and followed that up with back-to-back -back sixes off Deary Rawlins in the 22nd over to rush to 90 not out and put the South Africans in a commanding position on 180 for one. He brought up his 100 in the 24th over and promptly retired on 104 off 78 balls, including seven sixes and five fours. England, beware. Sussex's bowlers were putting in a shift, but the South Africans were showing their class, and Dumini took on the role de Kock played so well and started to find his range. Briggs felt the full force of the visitors as he was struck for back-to-back -back sixes in the 27th over. Before Sagandi eventually did for Dumini as he found Philip Salt to lead for 68 of 46 balls. And five balls later, Sagandi had his second wicket of the game when David Miller hit one to Van Zell to go for 25. Sagandi finished with figures of two for 62 of his six overs. There was time for Dwayne Pretorius to clear the ropes in the final over as the South Africans finished on 289 off their 32 overs. The Sharks needed a quick start, but Pagiso Rabada showed why he's considered one of the best bowlers in the world when he bowled Chris Nash for a duck in the first over of the reply. And followed that up three balls later, pinning Luke Wells in front, also for a duck. Sussex found themselves two down for six runs after the first over. Van Sale, who would have enjoyed taking on his fellow countryman and with a point to prove having 12 test caps to his name, took a liking to Parnell in the fourth over, taking three boundaries off the former Sussex man. Before the left armour got his revenge and had Van Sale caught by Farhan Baharian for 16 of 10 balls, including those three fours. Salt and Finch were tasked with rebuilding the innings, and that's exactly what they did. They played their way back into the game, picking off the bad ball when it was there to be hit, and by the time the 11th over was reached, Salt was seeing the ball well, and took 15 off a Pretorius over, including the innings' first maximum. Two more boundaries followed in the next over, before Mornay Morkel had Salt taken by de Kock to end a sprightly innings of 37 from 33 balls, and a partnership of 57 to leave Sussex on 87 for four. Rawlins had joined Finch at the crease and the pair continued in a watchful manner before Rawlins took on Kevash Maharaj in the 17th over, hitting him for two fours and two sixes to take 20 run runs off the over. Rawlins was seeing the ball well and had helped to take his side past the 150 mark, but was run out for 41 off 30 balls, including three fours and two sixes. The score at the end of the 21st over, 156 for five. The Sharks were well behind the run rate, needing 128 from 60 balls, but there was a still a glimmer of hope until Maharaj was brought back into the attack for the 23rd over, first accounted for Michael Burgess for seven, before also adding Briggs to his scalps for one. It meant the home side found themselves seven down with nine overs to go and 125 runs still needed. With Finch batting so well and still in, anything was possible. He passed the 50 mark and continued to prove a thorn in the South African's attack. It took Andeli Pelakoyu to see the back of Finch. In the 26th over, with 183 on the board, Finch found Parnell and left having made a valiant 62 from 59 balls. Pelakoyu also accounted for Garton in the 27th over, and Sussex was staring defeat in the face. It was now down to the last pair to try and see out the remaining overs. And that's exactly what they did, with Ajmal Sazad in particular showing off his batting prowess. He took on all the bowlers and with a lot of success. By the time the players shook hands, he had struck five fours in his 34 from 26 balls. It meant the home side fell only 66 runs short in the end, an effort they can be proud of given the opposition facing them. It's now back to the Championship on Sunday, where Durham will be the visitors to the first central county ground.